Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to be able uh, to address you at this first online edition of the Arctic Science Summit Week. I had planned to be with you in Akureyri, but we have all had to make certain changes to our plans as we are coming to terms with the largest health threat in living memory. But scientists are true to their innovative nature and I must commend the organizers of the Arctic Science Summit Week for quickly coming up with these ambitious solutions of turning it into an online event. Iceland currently holds the uh, chairmanship of the Arctic Council. It is a responsibility that we release as it's truly both an exciting and challenging time to serve as the chair. Political interest in the Arctic region is at at level never seen before, and not without a reason. Our region is changing at a pace not experienced in modern times. This includes continuous, noticeable and faithful warming of the Arctic climate, which has led to perceived opportunities as well as obvious challenges, which will have an impact within and far beyond the Arctic. The slogan of our chairmanship of the Arctic Council, together towards a sustainable Arctic, frames our shared responsibility very clearly. Success and results require the joint forces of science and policy, local to global. As echoed in the headline of today's program, Science for a Sustainable Arctic. Under the overarching theme of sustainable development, Iceland emphasizes strongly the importance of balancing all its three aspects. The environment, looking specifically at green energy solutions. The economy, with an emphasis on the blue bioeconomy. And social aspects, such as the engagement of Arctic youth and gender equality. I sometimes say that the commodities of the Arctic Councils are facts and science. It is then up to us in politics to make sure that all this knowledge will be used to inform our policies and actions. I am pleased to say that there is a widespread political support of basing sustainable development of the Arctic on science and facts. This is particularly important given the fact that there are some truly dark clouds on our horizons. We should all be very mindful of the fact that in order to steer our societies, businesses and governments in the right directions, we must inevitably weather the storm. We need to inspire hope and engagement in our youth and in our societies at large. We must do it through inclusion and the building of resilience. And even though failure really isn't the option, we must not let the fear of failure lead to inaction. Success is usually only achieved through trial and error, and trial again. And yes, error comes with a cost. The alternative is however worse and comes at an even greater cost. This is a lesson we have learned in Iceland time and time again. Allow me to share with you one example. Sustainable use of natural resources transformed Iceland within a span of less than a century from being one of the poorest countries in Europe into one of its most affluent. A century ago, brave Icelandic innovators pioneered the heating of Reykjavik household by using geothermal district heating. It was a difficult and costly decision for a poor, newly sovereign country. Today this decision continues to support Iceland efforts to reach its Paris Climate Agreement targets. Indeed, Iceland has agreed to reduce its greenhouse gas emission by 40% by 2030, and the government aims for a carbon neutral Iceland by 2040. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, I would like to thank you for being online with us today. 
it would have been even better to have spent time with you in person in Akureyri, a town I have very close ties with. But as the proverb says, no matter how long the winter, spring is sure to follow. And I look forward to a future opportunity to welcome you in person to IASK's current home in Akureyri, Iceland. Thank you for participating.